Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly for pricing. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today, we are discussing the 2019 launched Blancpain 50 Fathoms rose gold ceramic dial. So this launched in 2019, and it's a watch based on a 2007 5015 reference, which is itself the current flagship version of a dive watch dating back to 1953. So a long lineage behind this one, but this is a famous first. It's the first time the company has used a ceramic dial on the 5015. The watch is 45 millimeters in diameter. It is 15.5 millimeters thick and 50.5 millimeters from lug to lug with a 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs. The 50 Fathoms debuted back in 1953, shortly before the Rolex Submariner. They jointly claim status as the first modern format dive watches, but the Blanc Pan was created specifically to meet the demands of the Marche de Combat, a French military tactical diver unit led by Claude Rifo and Bob Maloubier. They are famed and their names inextricably linked to the 50 Fathoms. You can see the watch on my wrist is narrow enough that I can pull it off. I would recommend this watch for a wrist no smaller than mine. My wrist is 16 centimeters circumference, and I think you need a wrist of this size or larger to wear the watch. It's maybe not as thick as you'd expect. As you could see, 15.5 becomes more like 14 millimeters of height when it's actually on the wrist and strapped down. And then the timepiece from over the top is nothing if not easy to read. Legibility comes first with the diver. Legibility and durability in equal measure, this watch has them. We'll do a quick loom shot so you can see why this watch is famous named sapphire capped bezel is so special. It allows the entire bezel to be loomed and the Luminova paint is protected by the ultra hard nine on the Mohs scale sapphire crystal. It is nine on the Mohs scale. Diamond is 10. Diamond is the only thing that can routinely scratch sapphire. And because the entire bezel is loomed, it's easy to read individual minutes, five minute increments and quarters. That can be tough when a dive bezel only has one luminescent pearl. You can also see that the seconds hand is luminescent. This is something that should be true of every dive watch. For some reason, it's not. You need to know if your watch is running if you dive in the dark. With Blanc Pan, you get that. Now, the dial is special. But let's get to the case, then the dial. Working our way from the clasp to the case, you can see it is a double deployant. This is not a universal feature on the 50 Fathoms, but because the rose gold model is a flagship, here we get a deployant clasp. You can see it's a combination of polish and satin, and that it is fixed to its strap using a combination of screws and bars, and so we have screws and bars over here, and then over here we have a screw fixing the buckle. Now a deployant clasp gives you protection against dropping your watch while you are donning it or removing it at bedside, but a screw fixed buckle gives you even more security. This isn't going to pop out and allow your watch to drop. You can see twin trigger release, so you have to press both triggers to release this clasp. It is a true sports clasp. Note the combination of polishing internally polishing of the trigger, vertical satination of the flank of the buckle, and then longitudinal satination across the top. Rolling around to the strap, sailcloth, a signature of this generation of 50 fathoms. It's dark navy blue. It has a monotone stitch, a little bit of bolstering to give it thickness, and you can see it's really just thick woven. And then there is rubber, vulcanized rubber on the bottom to protect the wrist from the aggressive textile material and to protect the material from the moisture, sweat, grit, and oils of the wrist. The strap is held on using bars and hex screws, and there's a very specific reason for that. This is difficult to mess up. That is to say, they are a lot more secure than spring bars. Spring bars fit in completely, or even completely, can be pulled out by violence. On the wrist, a screw and bar setup is exactly what you want on a big, heavy sports watch. And frankly, it costs a bit more, but this watch is worth it. Hex screws, why? Because they're harder to strip, strip out than flatheads. So flathead screws are more common in the industry, but hex head screws are used, for example, by Blancpain and Zinn because they're harder to strip out. You can apply more torque without damage 
damaging them. The case is all satin finished, and that is specific to the model. It was conceived with a vibrant blue dial and bezel, and then a muted red gold case with vertical satination on its flanks and longitudinal satination on the lugs. You can see that the bezel itself has been satinated as well. It's a more subdued look than the high polish of a standard 5015. We have a vintage inspired big crown, but it does include crown guards. And you can see there's a lot of subtlety to that big crown. The knurling is wonderfully tactile to grip and operate. 300 meters water resistant. Yes, I know 300 meters is not 1,000 feet. Press the I believe button. We have that cambered sapphire on the bezel. Now, other watches have used sapphire caps on bezels. We've seen them on Bremonts, we've seen them on IWCs, and many more. What sets this one apart is that it is cambered or curved. That's a lot more expensive than flat. And you can see the same treatment over the dial, giving the look of a vintage plexiglass, as you might have found on a watch worn by Bob Malubier during his actions in the name of France with the Nageur de Combat. The dial, ceramic. For the first time on the 5015, we have a dial of ceramic. So you can see outboard, there is a flange that's polished. Inboard of that, there's a matte finished ceramic treatment underneath the hour track. We have applique rose gold indices and quarter Arabic numerals. We have a polished center disc, and that polished center disc has a pronounced sunburst grain to it. So we have two different treatments of ceramic on this dial, and of course, rose gold hands that are a hybrid of broadsword and syringe styles. Turning the watch over, you can see that there is a rotor specific to this model. Four different finishes. There's beveling, there's satination, and there's media blasting. The movement has three barrels, automatic winding, and an impressive five-day power reserve. This is manufactured caliber 1315. When well, I say manufactured, it's built by Frédéric Piguet, which is Manufacture Blanc Pain. So it won't be available to any other Swatch Group brands. We have those three barrels, so it doesn't gallop when it's fully wound, and it doesn't slow down meaningfully after one, two, three days, the way a single barrel movement can. We have both hacking seconds and a quick set date. The watch beats at eight beats per second. It pivots on 35 joules, and impressively, it is adjusted in six positions, one more than a standard chronometer. Remember, chronometer standard, and the standard you'll find on, for example, Vacheron Constantin, that is five position adjustment. Here we have six. And we have a free sprung balance for toughness, and we have a silicon hairspring for anti-magnetism. We have a balance that is small with recessed bolts, and it beats at a high rate, eight beats per second. And then we have beautifully finished bridges with some of the broadest and most attractive unglage I've ever seen on a series production watch. There is solarization on the ratchet wheel. There's satination on the train wheels. Black polished screws with chamfered slots and chamfered circumference. And then a deeply grooved spiral graining across the bridges with engine turning on the base plate. This watch has it all. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.